I am not from Dayton. I was not born here. I did not grow up here. I hadn't even heard of Dayton until I was 20 years old. When I first came to Rice State University in 2002 for a 10-month exchange program, I had no plans of ever coming back. And when I came back for grad school in 2003, I had no intention of staying for more than five, maybe six years. And even when I accepted a job in 2012, after 10 years in the Dayton area, I wasn't planning to stay for more than three or four years. <laughs> for the first 13 years that I lived in the Dayton area, I always thought of myself as a temporary resident. People would ask me why I was living in Dayton, and I would typically explain that uh, I was only here until I finished my doctorate degree, or until I found a better opportunity elsewhere, or until, I, until some external barrier was removed that allowed me to continue my life elsewhere. But something changed in the last four years. In March of 2015, I reached out to the Downtown Dayton Partnership to inquire about spaces to relocate our business downtown. A guy by the name of Scott Murphy uh, replied with a cordial email. We received your request. Thanks for your interest. I will give you a call on Monday to learn more about your requirements and get the search started. Look forward to talking with you. I didn't know it at the time, but that email was about to change my life. For those of you who don't know Scott, he's a relatively young, relatively short guy <laughs> with spiky hair, <laughs> deep blue eyes, a contagious laugh that he just heard a little bit of, <laughs> and an unwavering uh, passion for revitalizing downtown. Scott was also one of the two co-directors uh, of Update when it was first founded 11 years ago. During the first year that we knew each other, there are three things that Scott did that I think are worth mentioning here. The first thing was he did his job. He took us into several downtown buildings, gave us tours of unfinished and finished commercial spaces. He, uh, told us about ongoing and upcoming developments in downtown. I love downtown. I, having grown up in a European city, I could, I, it was easy for me to see, to envision what a thriving downtown would look and feel like. And it was easy for me to see how more businesses and more residents moving in could accelerate that vision. As it turned out, my company did not move downtown for, another, for more than three years. But within six months of that initial email, I bought a condo and moved myself downtown. The second thing that Scott did was invited me to participate in Start Downtown, an initiative bringing together local entrepreneurs and community members to create an ecosystem to support entrepreneurship downtown. And everybody in that initiative was extremely welcoming to me. Many of the people I met then are good friends to this day. In addition, as an added perk, I got to go on a few, maybe several, underground tours of the Dayton Arcade uh, before most Daytonians under 40 even knew what a Dayton Arcade was. The third thing that Scott did was introducing me to Up Dayton. In 2016, I attended my first summit, and within a couple of months, I joined the team behind the longest table, the pro one of the projects that won at that, that year's summit. The, long, the longest table aimed at bringing together people from all over town to share a free meal with Daytonians they wouldn't have otherwise met, learn about each other's neighborhoods, and together envision what the Dayton they would like to see. And that's what it did. In 2016, over 300 people were brought to the Third Street Bridge. And in 2017, over twice as many, over 600 people were brought to the, to the Third Street Bridge. My team, the role of my team was to uh, design the conversation that was going to be had at the table among table guests and to provide guidance for table hosts to facilitate it. In between 2016 and 2017, between those big events, uh, the longest table also held smaller community meals in different neighborhoods around town. Those were probably most impactful for me personally. They took me to parts of town I hadn't experienced before. 
I met um, community leaders that I probably wouldn't have met otherwise. I also met countless residents from East, West, and North Dayton, some who were directly impacted by the opiate crisis, some who were homeless, some who lived in neighborhoods full of vacant lots, some who were at the table because they were hungry, some who were at the table because they wanted to help those in need. I learned a lot about Dayton and about the issues facing Dayton. And I learned about those issues firsthand in location from the people who were experiencing them and some of the people who were working to address them. In hindsight, it's probably not that surprising that participating in the design and facilitation of an experience to connect Daytonians to each other and to their city transformed my own relationship with Dayton. After the longest table, my interest in downtown revitalization decreased slightly, and my interest in finding ways to advance communities that are consistently left behind increased substantially. I developed relationships with community leaders that are actively working to advance underserved populations in the area. I became more active in the work to improve community police relations in the area or in the city. Um, and I continue to support local entrepreneurs and other initiatives that, in general, were aligned with these goals. And in the process, I learned a lot about myself, about what drives me, and about how I want to spend the rest of my life. Today, I call Dayton home, not because I have to, but because I want to. One could say that after all these years, I finally fell in love with Dayton. Um, but if you want to think about it that way, I think it's important to note that I did not fall, with this, fall in love with this idealized image of Dayton. It wasn't its rising downtown, or its impressive history, or its physical assets or amenities. I do see all the good things that are going, all the, that are going well in Dayton. And many of those were part of the reason I made the initial decision to move downtown. But what really captivated me about Dayton was seeing the parts that most people want to hide. It was seeing its flaws and seeing those people who are adversely impacted by them and those who are actively working to change them. What captivated me was the overlooked assets that most of Dayton doesn't even know it has and the untapped talent that never gets connected to opportunity. Today, or this time, I fell in love with the people and what Dayton could become if we succeed at connecting every citizen to the opportunities they deserve. It's truly remarkable how something as small as showing a new person around town or introducing them to like-minded people or inviting them to participate in a community initiative, it's remarkable how that can transform a person's life. Scott serves as a catalyst for a change in my life that, I, that might have not otherwise happened. And for that, I am grateful. I am not from Dayton. I was not born here. I did not grow up here. I hadn't even heard of Dayton until I was 20 years old. And today, at 37, 17 years after I heard the word Dayton for the first time, I'm happy to call Dayton home. Thank you.